This conference will now be recorded. Good morning, all. In the yesterday's class, we have understand what is SAP UI file, what is OData, what is Fiery. We have understand what is what are the previous technologies before SAP UI file came into the market. The model view controller architecture of SAP UI file. The end-to-end -end data flow that happens in all SAP UI file and Fiery applications and the exact difference between UI5 and Fiery. So what is UI5? UI5 is a technology that we understand. Okay. And what are the various things that comes under the Fiery part? So that also we understand. So basically we got a complete overview on SAP UI5, Odata and Fiery. Okay. So this is what we understand in our last class. And in today's class, we are going to start with our SAP UI5. Okay. So the training will be in the direction like first we'll start with the SAP UI5, then we'll go to OData, and then we'll, end, we'll develop an end to end application. So with the front end and back end, making uh, a connection between the front end and back end, we'll develop an end to end project. So after that, we'll enter into the theory and what are the uh, uh, things that I told you under the theory category yesterday. So we are going to see all that stuff in the theory. So this is the flow in which you need to learn. Okay, right. Now, to develop SAP UI Fire applications, to develop SAP UI 5 applications, you need a tool. So what are the tools available? So you can use Eclipse or SAP Web ID. But Eclipse way of development is ruled out in the year 2014 itself, 14, 15 itself. Nowadays, all the clients are working with the SAP Web ID, not with the Eclipse. There are a lot of features which SAP WebID offers, which your Eclipse will not offer. So once we, you know, the entire training will go on with SAP WebID only. So Eclipse, if you want, I will just take, you know, uh, I, will, I will explain how to work with Eclipse. But Eclipse doesn't have more many features, like if you want to extend a standard theory application, it is not possible by using Eclipse. If I want a theory application by using a template, that is not possible by using Eclipse. If I want to develop uh, some theory, you know, annotation based applications, that is not possible by use, using Eclipse. And Eclipse will not give suggestions. Eclipse will not uh, suggest uh, throw errors for the as per the SAP UI5 naming standards or uh, you know coding standards, it won't throw errors. So like this, there are so many you know features which are missing in Eclipse because SAP did not concentrate on Eclipse. Only in 2013, when SAP UI5 first time got introduced, like a beta version. So at that time, he has given the option with Eclipse, and there is another. Uh, 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 ID called uh, NWDS Netweaver uh, Development Studio. Okay, and so there is another heavy tool. That's a heavy tool actually. So using these two tools, we use it to you know do at that time. So after that, SAP want to build his own tool and keep all the features at one place, and that is SAP Web ID. Okay, and all the clients because of the features, they are you know uh, obviously taking the license for the SAP Web ID. So in our training, we are going to use SAP Web ID officially. Okay, so the entire training will go on SAP Web ID only. Okay, so that uh, we cover as per the real time standards, right? Fine. Now I told you, <coughs> SAP Web ID is a licensed based 
then how can we uh, do this in our training? Luckily, SAP WebID has a trial version also. SAP WebID has a trial version also, which comes with the complete features. Almost all the features of your license-based SAP WebID, you can find in uh, the, uh, the trial version of SAP WebID also. Okay, mostly, almost all the features, uh, except, uh, you know, a few, except few things. So, we, you know, like deployments, like, uh, you know, the number of application uh, that you can configure uh, in the cloud. So, except, so those things. So, if you want to do a trial on, on various features that are available, yes, in trial web ID also, you can able to do. Okay. And one more advantage with this trial SAP Web ID is SAP has not given any expiry date or end date for this trial version of SAP Web ID as of now. Okay, so you can use it as many days as uh, you know till SAP has uh, SAP has not declared any official date or he he's not saying anything on the expiry date of this trial SAP Web ID also. So you can use it fine. Now I'm going to show you how you can, so not normally in real time, the client will provide you the URL and uh, the username password for this SAP Web ID. Now in our, uh, during our training, so everybody has to create your own account for the SAP Web ID. So I will tell you uh, the procedure to create this particular account, okay? SAP Web ID is a browser-based tool. It's a cloud-based tool. SAP, it's a part of the SAP HANA cloud. Okay. And uh, it is not, it doesn't require any installation. You don't need to install anything. So if you want to have SAP Web ID. Okay. So all you want to have is an account in HANA, SAP HANA cloud platform. That's it. Okay. So to create an account, in SAP HANA Cloud Platform. First of all, you should have a Gmail ID. And I request everybody, even though you have an account or even though you don't have an account, create a new Gmail ID first for this SAP UI5 Fiery training. So which will be dedicatedly uh, will be there. Okay. Uh, and go to this site called hanatrialondemand.com. Go to the site hanatrialondemand.com. So let me show you in an incognito window because I already logged in. Go to hanatrialondemand.com. Okay. So here you will be finding two buttons. One second, it's loading. Right. So for the first time, you need to click on register. So once you successfully registered, you can come back here and click on log on. Okay. So click on register. It's just like a simple Facebook form, you know, having only five fields under your first name, last name, email ID. So I told you to create a new Gmail ID, right? So keep that uh, Gmail ID here and, uh, f you know, uh, provide a new password or so better you give whatever Gmail ID password is there. So maintain the same password for this HANA account also, HANA Cloud Platform account also. After that, check these two check boxes, click on register. That's it, you will successfully uh, uh, register with this SAP Cloud Platform. Now, an email will be sent to your Gmail ID, whatever that you have provided here to activate your account to activate your account. So after that, you just go to your Gmail and open the mail, uh, you know, belongs to SAP HANA Cloud Platform. You can see a button clearly, click to activate your account, okay? So it will be, you know, highlighting with a blue color so you can easily, you know, figure it out. Click the button and the account will get activated. Once the account got activated, Again, you need to come to the same site, hanatrialondemand.com. 
okay this time instead of clicking on register click on log on because you already have an account and during the log on it will ask the user id password user id is nothing but your gmail id or password password is whatever you have you have set during the creation of the account so enter the email id and password and then you will land up into something called hana cloud platform home page which is basically called as uh, hana cloud platform cockpit okay the home, home page uh, he is calling it as a cockpit so i am clicking on log on so my user id password already there in the browser session so it is simply logging in so you land up like this actually so in this you need to go to the neo trial so click this tile and from the left hand side uh, menu so you need to select services and in the search type web and you can see web id full stack so click this so click the tile so it opens it gives you some description about the sap web id so if you would like to read it then read it come down so in the take action you need to click on go to service okay so the moment you click on go to service your sap web id will be loaded so this is your sap web id this is your sap web id okay so you can see i'll, I'll just you know i open some my project uh, so in the uh, real time i just opened it that's it so that you can just see i uh, know the how sap web id uh, looks like okay so i'm just closing all the windows yeah so basically since i am a trainer you can see a lot of projects in sap web id but uh, uh, for you this particular sap web id workspace will be empty it shows like this for you so even though you expand so you don't have any projects inside the workspace so first i would like to explain uh, this sap web id so here the left hand side is called project explorer right hand side is called code editor so since all the projects will be available in the left hand side it is called uh, project explorer the right hand side uh, we have you know the code editor where you will uh, edit your code so this is basically your development tab so where uh, you know you will be developing your sap ui for applications so this is the home tab <clears throat> this is development this is a uh, you know database explorer where uh, you know uh, if you have purchased sap hana also on the cloud so then only will use it otherwise uh, there is no meaning of this one okay and there are some settings that you will understand slowly okay right so as i already told you so since i am a trainer we are teaching from 2013 so you can find uh, these many projects here now how to create a new sap ui for application by using sap web id so right click on your workspace okay new project from template okay so from this project from template you need to select sap ui for application click next and provide the project name and then the namespace so project name you can write anything so as per the uh, my naming convention i just give the batch number was is batch 44 uh demo okay was is 44 batch 44 demo namespace so provide some namespace so doesn't matter uh, you can you can give any name but uh, this is having a naming convention so the namespace should always have the naming convention like com dot okay then client name 
com dot client name dot app name so this is the naming convention that you need to follow for namespace okay so remember we have given the project name as as is batch 44 demo and namespace as com dot client name dot app name so in my uh, you know uh, in our case the client is oasis my client is oasis so com dot oasis an app name so as is or you can write app name is training you can write anything doesn't matter okay click next so the wizard will automatically create the first view for you so i told you sap ui5 is based on model view controller architecture right so the first view it will automatically create for you okay so it is giving the view name as view1 but you can always change this what with whatever the name that you want i'm changing it to first first click next and finish now the project is getting created Right. the project has created you can see as is batch 44 demo okay right so if you want to run this project and see how the initial output is coming so you can select the index.html and click on run this is a run button at the top so you can see this is index.html this is run button you no need to select index.html also you can select the project and then click on run okay that is also fine okay so let us have a look at the output the initial output of your sap ui5 application so this is how your sap ui5 application looks like okay so by default without any further coding so by default this is the output of your sap ui5 application okay right now we need to understand the complete structure of this sap ui5 project the complete structure okay so i am going to explain the complete structure now Give me one second. Guys. yeah sorry guys yeah 
So this is the complete structure of your SAP UI5 project, and we need to understand uh, the various files and folders. Okay. So first of all, the bottom four files. These four files have, you know, uh, when you when you deploy this application to the server, these four files will not get deployed because these four files having a separate, uh, you know, the meaning and purpose. And uh, th these four files are not for the deployment actually, okay? So only when you are completely using SAP Cloud Platform, so at the time only, these four files will be deployed. So in your on-premise means, if your server, if your gateway server, if your SAP backend server, both are in your premises, means in your landscape, not in the SAP Cloud landscape, so at the time, these four files will not get deployed. Anyway, I will explain uh, the purpose of each file here. Okay. Right. So this is called project folder. Whereas this batch 40 demo, this is called project folder. And second, this is the web app folder, which is called the root folder for all the files root folder folder for all the resources all the resources whatever the development resources development files are there so this is the root folder for all the resources okay so if you observe all the development related files folders will be present under the web app folder if i minimize you can't see the development related uh, the files and folders forget about these four files okay so these four files are not a part of the development you don't touch these files in generally okay so i will tell you what is the purpose of this one later okay so these controller css i18 and so all these files are under web app folder uh, all the resources are under web app folder so that's the reason web app folder is called as the root folder for all the resources okay now inside the web app folder let us understand what are the various uh, you know files and folders are there and what is the meaning of them okay so i told you sap ui5 is based on model view and controller architecture and you can see the view folder here you can see the model folder here you can see the controller folder here Okay, right. So the view layer, so what is the purpose of the view layer? The view folder will store all the views of the application. So during the creation of the project, the project itself has created by default one view. And we have given the name for that view as first view. So the view, the extension will be dot view dot xml so all the views will have the same dot extension that is dot view dot xml okay and according to the one is to one relationship for this particular view sap dur during the wizard during the creation of sap ui5 project the wizard will automatically create the controller also okay so if you go to the controller folder and expand you can see the corresponding controller with the same name. This is first view, this is first controller. The dot extension for the view will be dot two dot XML. The dot extension for a controller will be dot controller dot JS. That's what you need to understand. Okay, right. So the view folder is for to store all the views. All the views will be under the view folder and all the controllers will be under the controller folder, okay? All views will be under view folder. And here all the controllers will be under controller folder, okay? Now let's go to the modal layer, okay? So actually the modal layer deals with the data and data manipulation, so which we already understand yesterday. The, the main model layer will be in the backend and that is part of the AC GW project that I told you yesterday. So basically the OData project, 
Okay, let me show you the diagram once again. You might have forget by this time. I, I will just show you the you know the diagram that I have shown you yesterday so that you can recollect. So we already discussed like model is nothing but the layer that deals, that deals with the data and data manipulations, correct? So to deal with the data and data manipulations, mainly uh, the data manipulations are nothing but your CRUD operations. So which are a part of the OData project, which is present in the backend. So the main model layer of SAP UI 5's MVC architecture, model view controller architecture. So the model layer basically will be present in the backend. Okay, this OData project is nothing but your model layer only. Okay, but then why we have this model folder in the front end? Why do you have the model layer in the front end? Because we store some static data in the front end also. So that's the reason we have a, another model layer here. I will give one example, then you will easily understand. Not all the data will be stored, 100% of the data will be stored in the backend, no. A 10% or 5% of the data in real time will be stored in the front end also. Let me give one example. Let's say I want to develop a drop down with gender values, male, female. To store these gender values, you really no need to store it in the backend table. You no need to go to SAP backend table, create Z gender. Okay, create a Z, Z table with gender. No, not required. Why? Why it is not required? Even after 10 years, even after 20 years, even after 30 years, the gender values will not change. So for those kind of values, for that kind of data, which will never change in the future, we don't store in the back end. We store in the front end model folder. Understand? So that is why we are having the model folder here. So it stores the data, static data, constant data, which will never change in the future. Okay. So let me give another example, like relationship values, father, mother, brother, sister, aunt, uncle, nephew, niece. Okay. So these relationship values also will never change in the future. Okay. So whatever the data that is static, all the static data will be stored in a model folder in the front end okay so because of this the performance of the application will improve okay because the data is in the front end and it will load in the drop downs or whatever very easily right so in this way you are improving the performance of the application as much as possible okay but in a real time 95 percent of the data will be in the back end only only five percent of the data just like i told you like gender values or yes no values or uh any any other like just like relationship values okay so these kind of values which are static those only will be available in the model folder will create in the model folder okay so let me write down here static data will be stored in the model folder right that is the purpose of having the model folder here next so now we covered this model view controller uh, layers. Now let's come in the sequence, CSS. So what is the purpose of having the CSS folder here? So inside this CSS folder, so you will be having a file called style.css. So CSS is for, yesterday we, uh, we have seen one of the advantage of SAP UI5 and that is, so what is the advantage of SAP UI5, one of the advantage, I told, any colors are possible, you can make your application colorful. So this will be done by using some CSS coding. Okay. So how to write the CSS coding inside this style.css. So this is, will be covered under the CSS topic. Okay. So in this file, we'll be writing some simple CSS coding. So because of which your application will get collects. Okay. Right. So that is the purpose of having the CSS folder to make your application 
colorful okay right so let's go to the next file or folder i18n i18n stands for the internationalization and what is internationalization internationalization means supporting your application with multiple languages internationalization so when the end user log in during with the launch pad the launch pad is having user id password and login language for example if i select the login language as english or the application should appear in english if i select the login language as uh, german the application will be uh, will appear in the german language and if i i know if i log in with another language like french or uh, any other language so then the application will appear in that particular language so this is basically called internationalization so how can you support internationalization inside this i18n folder you will maintain some translation files okay for each language for each language will be uh, you know maintaining internationalization means uh, separate separate files for example i want to support this application for three languages then i i need to create three property files inside this so we have a separate topic for each and every thing that i am telling you guys so today you are just going to understand the structure of the project that is the main uh, you know intention of this class okay so for every every file folder whatever the topic that i am telling we have a separate class where you we, you will be doing practically okay <clears throat> right so <clears throat> i18 i18n this particular file and folder will help you in the internationalization concept that means whenever you want to make your application to support for multiple languages so for each language you will maintain one property file here and inside this property file you will have the translations provided for that particular language okay so if you are supporting for german then whatever the visual labels everything so you will be writing in the german language so similarly french you will be creating another file another dot property file and you will maintain translations okay so by keeping these translation files in i18n folder what what it will do at the time when you log in with the launch pad with your selected language like german then it will automatically pick up the corresponding i18n dot property file and it will show that application uh, because you maintain the translations in that particular language so all the application labels and everything will appear in german language or whatever the language okay so that is the purpose of having i18n folder here okay right uh, somebody asked one question like most of the time we will use internationalization so you mean to say do we use internationalization or not so you know few clients ask for the internationalization few clients doesn't ask so you know you it it purely depends on the client okay so there are clients who ask for the internationalization and there are clients who doesn't ask but you should you know know the how if if you want to implement how okay so that will be covered as a part of the topic called internationalization next so there is a test folder if you want to test the application uh, with as with some dummy data so in that case you can use the test folder here but mostly we don't use this uh, test uh, folder at all okay and this also will not be deployed into the this will not be deployed into the server remember that next component.js so component.js is like a global memory okay so it's a central component for the entire application so this particular component.js act like a global memory global space okay so what is the purpose of having component.js if you want to share the data if you have some common data which has to be shared across all the web pages let's say you have some common data that has to be shared across 
all the web pages, not only for a single web page. So you want to share this data to all the web pages. If you keep that data in the component.js, that becomes global and all the pages, all the views can able to access that particular data. Okay, so it is a global space. It's a central component which act as a global space. Okay, so if you keep anything inside component.js that becomes global, it can be accessible by any view, any controller. Okay, so let me give one more example. I have a common logic to, to be implemented for all the views, let's say. Okay, so in the view one also, <clears throat> I have the same functionality in the view to also have the same functionality like this. I have the same functionality in all the views. In that case, don't write that logic in those views controllers, write that logic in the component.js. Then you can call that logic from any view. So it is a global, <coughs> globally accessible uh, area. Okay. It's a file, whatever the code, code or whatever the data that you keep inside the component.js that becomes global and it can be accessible by any view and controller okay next index.html index.html is a starting point of execution starting point of execution for your sap ui application so whenever you select the project and click on run i will show you again so I selected the project and click on run. So it automatically execute the index.html because index.html is the starting point of execution for SAP UI for application. Okay. So this is the file that will be loaded first. Index.html is a file that will be loaded first. And from there, the execution will happen. Okay. Next. So what are the contents of index.html that we are going to understand from the next class. Next manifest.json. This is your manifest.json. The manifest.json is called as application descriptor. The name given by SAP for this application descriptor. So this contains some description about the application as well as some important configurations configurations of the application. So very important configurations of the application. So uh, the main important configurations are some root view configuration, routing configuration, okay? And some, uh, you know, uh, application uh, uh, related application ID, application description. So there will be some configurations will be present in manifest.json. So, uh, no, uh, routing is one of the most important configuration that you write in the manifest.json file. So we'll be having a separate class to understand the manifest.json. So you no need to worry. Uh, I will explain that in detail. Okay, right. So these are the files and folders that get deployed into the server when you deploy this application to your server by right clicking. And there is a deploy option. So where you can deploy if to the, to your uh, you know gateway server so remember all your ui fi applications will also be deployed into the gateway server only so i have written here clearly this is gateway system and you can see the ui fi fiery applications also in the gateway system o data service also in the gateway system okay so since the o data service also in the gateway system ui fi application also in the gateway system ui fi can easily interact with the O data and O data will interact with the backend system and it will serve you to pull the data, push the data, everything. Okay. All right. Right. So basically these are the files and folders that get deployed into the server. And now you can find there are four files which are outside this particular uh, web app folder. And we don't require these files during the deployment and we don't touch these files. You, you don't need to do anything with these files. First one, grunt file. The grunt file will be automatically used for building this project. So when you uh, deploy this project, before the deploy, it will build the project to check any errors, okay? 
So during that uh, check, the grunt file dot js is the one that automatically, you know, uh, it contains some configuration related to the build of your UIF application, and it will do. You don't write any code inside. A new app dot json is a file that uh, automatically gets a configuration uh, when you connect your SAP Web IDE. So let me show you. During the development, your SAP Web IDE has to connect with this SAP Gateway system. So to uh, for this SAP Web IDE, okay, let's assume this is Web IDE. This Web IDE has to connect to this SAP Gateway system during our development, right? So if I if I'm not connected with this SAP Gateway system, how can I pull the data? How can I, you know, uh, how can I develop the end-to-end -end application? Not possible, right? So to connect to this particular SAP Gateway system, a small configuration is uh, required, and that automatically gets added inside this new app.json. So new app.json contains some automatic configurations. Uh, that are required to access this SAP Gateway system, okay, to connect to this SAP Gateway system and few, uh, uh, few you know, prerequisite files, okay. And again, you don't write any coding, uh, especially inside this new app.json, you, you no need to write. Next, package log.json and package.json. Uh, so these two, you know, uh, show you uh, some log information about uh, the application. So when you when you once the application got built and when you run the application, so it automatically contains uh, some log information actually. And again, we we don't touch these files. We, you you don't need to uh, really open these files and you know write something. You you never write anything in these four files. Okay. So they contain some default configuration and default code. And uh, the package log.json on these files will automatically, you know, uh, come up with the new log information, all that stuff. When you build it, it will show like the application has built. And when you run this, it will show the application is running mode like that. Okay, it automatically uh, get added. And these files will not be deployed into the server. You remember that. Okay. Right. So this is the complete uh, structure of the project. And from tomorrow class, so today we just understand how to access your SAP Cloud Platform and then how to access your SAP Web IDE, then how to create your first UIF application by using SAP Web IDE, what, what is a structure, complete structure with files and folders. So which file is for which purpose, which folder is for which purpose. So this is what we understand totally today. Okay, so tomorrow, from tomorrow, we are going to understand the main, the most important topic for to understand the SAP UI fi application, which is called initial flow of SAP UI fi application. So, in that particular class, we are going to cover when you run this application, what are the files, what are the folders executed in a sequence? So, what is the first file that executed? What is the code inside it? What is the second file that gets executed? What is the code inside that? Okay, so we are going to understand the initial flow of execution till you get this view. So in tomorrow's class, you are going to understand how do you get this view in the output? How do you got this view in the output? So that flow you will understand, okay? So that's it for today's class. If you have any questions, you can ask me guys. Hey, Rizwan, Prasad. Yeah, Prasad. Hey, uh, I uh, logged into the cloud platform uh, cockpit. Okay, so okay. in this case, I could see application Java HTML5. So I need to create a HTML, HTML5 application? No, no, whatever you deploy. See, for example, I deploy this one. Okay, uh, then this how will- did you create that? How did you create that folder? Which one? Uh, the See, OAS is uh, uh, demo. This one? Uh -huh. uh, did you miss anything? I think so. I am because right now I'm in a cloud. Okay, your new workspace. See, go to the workspace. Okay. Uh, right wait, how mm -hmm. should I go to workspace? Uh, are you inside WebID? I'm in yeah, SAP Cloud Platform Cockpit. Okay. 
go to services okay. one second services click okay on, click on new drive go to services okay and here you need to type web type web so your web id tile will come i Scroll don't down. SAP IC web developer experience. Okay, web ID stack. Okay, that I need to enable or I need to click web ID full stack. You click that tile actually. Click okay, the tile. Right. It'll land okay. up into. The... I did it. Okay. Can you see this page? Yeah, I could see. Click on go to service at the bottom. Go to service. Okay, take action. When you click, uh, your web ID will load. And here you, you need to create the project. So I think you missed a part of the session. Uh, okay, at the time maybe I'm downloading that, uh, creating Google, uh, Google Gmail and uh, uh, Web ID. Okay, so okay, now I could see the file and everything. Oh, okay, okay, here I need to create a um, new new, so right, new right, project new from template. Project from template. Oh, okay, so. Okay, project from template. Then I need to say uh, what kind of application is it like? Uh, UEFI application. Uh, one minute. Where is it? SAP UEFI. Yeah, SAP UEFI application. Oh, okay, SAP UEFI application. Oh, okay. Then click next and give the name of the project and namespace. Oh, okay. Okay. Namespace. Namespace will be in the you know it's a naming convention like com dot client name dot app name. Okay. So something like this uh, you can give okay. anything but follow this name convention click next and finish okay that's fast it is asking a uh, view type xml right yeah view name the view name you can change. Okay. Just write some first or something. Okay. Next. Next and finish. Finish. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, guys, uh, you'll be getting the every day's video and uh, the soft copy of this code every day. Uh, after your uh, payment actually so oh, okay. you can watch this video if you have missed something so i understand all your real time developer real time you know employees okay. so if you, okay. you know in case if you miss something also you can just uh, revisit the video rewind it any number of times and you can watch it i have one more question uh, if you have time can you go to the same uh, file uh, menu, op menu option. Go to the file. Okay. Okay. Uh, just uh, uh, a new. Okay. Okay. Uh, project from template, right? That's go that same. Yeah. Okay. Do. Okay. Here, uh, if you go down, uh, okay. why you are getting? Uh, okay. I'm seeing. Okay. SAP Fury. Uh, go down. Sorry, okay. SAP. If I, uh, see, what are these like? Uh, SAP. Uh, uh, work list application, SAP, Fiori, uh, I told you right yesterday, like Fiori will provide some templates. So those are templates. So that oh, will be okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. okay. To get this kind of this application, do you need to connect to uh, front end server or no need? See, these are the templates, ready made templates. Once oh. you select the template, the template will have the wizard, and that wizard will guide you. You know, uh, it will ask the whole data service. Okay, and then it will ask you to select some properties, and then the application gets created without writing code. I told oh, you, right? Ninety okay, percent of the code will get generated. Oh, okay, got it, got it. Okay. Uh, yeah. Last question. <laughs> so, yeah, are you uh, are you exposing uh, yeah, any uh, BO BF uh, uh, technology? Like uh, I see, like. Mm -hmm. uh, CDS view, you can expose no. and create a BOPF, and on top of that, you can no, create a. BOPF, we are not uh, covering BOPF. We are not covering, okay. 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 We, we okay. cover only you know, the CDS with annotations, uh, that is enough actually. BOPF uh, still. You know, no, actually, uh, in my project, uh, I'm dealing with the actions, okay? 
So if you look at, I don't know whether you, maybe you have any idea of production uh, process. In the production order, like there are multiple actions, okay? So I gone through that uh, one of the uh, gateway service, okay? So where uh, SAP has come up with a BFPF model for that Fiori app. Okay, so just I'm exploring uh, on the architecture behind that. So then I identified it's uh, related to the BOPF. So thought of checking with you. No, that's not a not a part of our codes. Okay, okay, should be fine. Okay, okay. Yeah, that's all from my side. So any other questions from anybody else? Yeah, that's correct. Your understanding is correct. We'll see the templates as a part of our theory. Okay. So first, you need to understand the UI for development concepts. Once you understand that, uh, the concept will be clear. As I told you, theory is nothing but UI for only. And even the template will generate UI for code only. Don't think it will generate some rocket science. That will also generate UI for code only. So first, you need to understand the UI for development concepts. Once you are fine with that, then we'll go to the theory. Okay. Okay. So tomorrow you don't have class, guys. Uh, for the initial Sundays, we leave. We don't uh, conduct the class. Uh, so we'll connect again on Monday. Okay. So tomorrow you don't have class. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, we'll teach you the real time, you know, complete uh, real time oriented only answer to why your name is coming as administrator. You can see your name always coming like administrator. Lalit. Okay. So final call for the questions. Okay, fine guys, uh, have a nice weekend. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.